that. Look at that, verse 9. The true light that enlightens every man was coming into the world. So now we get that in contrast to a light or an enlightener that other people would have considered having come into the world, this light is identified as the true light. So the true light has its origin, it seems, outside of the world because it tells us that it's coming into the world. So the true light is coming into the world, and this is the world. And coming into the world, it says that he is going to enlighten every man. So the purpose of the true light is to enlighten every man. We get that as the purpose of this true light. And again, we see that for John, his purpose was to benefit everybody. And then this true light's purpose is to enlighten or bring light, illuminate every man, and more specifically, every man that's in the world. And this is something I want to emphasize for, especially for people today who want to disconnect the actions of God with what's happening right now in the world. We always want to make God doing everything in heaven. And if we want to join God in what he's doing, we've got to either get to heaven to figure out what it all means, such as an afterlife on the other side of the reality that we find ourselves in now, so that this world turns into a dust bowl that's just going to kick over. But the reality is, the true light, with the purpose to enlighten every man, found his way coming into the world. And I talked to you about, in John, this, this world here is cosmos in, in the Greek, and it, it is not just the earth or the planet. It has to do with the order and systems that govern humanity. So the true light is going to enlighten every man in the midst of the order and systems that govern humanity. And this is important because for many of us, our, our light and our understanding of where this is going, Jesus, Jesus is, is not going to be involved in the politic of our day. Jesus is not going to be involved in some of the uh, ways that we spend our leisure time and, and, and how we, we spend our, our money and our resources. He's not going to do that. He's concerned with things that are disconnected from this world and have to do with heavenly things. So we concentrate on this idea of heavenly things as being so different from the things in the world and we miss that the true light comes into the world to enlighten every man from within the world's order and systems that govern humanity. You see, while there is a, a seeming truth to those previous statements about how Jesus would come into the world, the, the blatant truth is that when he does this, he is bringing a reversal or he is turning an upside down world right side up and he is going to blow it up basically from the inside. He is going to take and allow, in the ultimate culmination at the end of this gospel, he's going to let the grave and death swallow him up, that it can't defeat him. Now, that's the end of the story before we get started, but I want you to really note, pay attention, that world here does not mean just that God came to earth, or that the word, the true light, just came to earth. No, he came into the order and the systems that govern humanity, and he... he he subjected himself to it. He was a part of it. And this doesn't mean he, he was a politician or that he was a businessman. That being in it, but he was not of it. So as the true light and the truth, he will enlighten people as to behave as an agent of God in these orders and systems that govern humanity, which is a very important thing for the Christians in, in that time, specifically after the destruction of the temple, the diaspora of the Jews and the early Christians, and they're spreading out through the Roman provinces with the uh, turnover from 
Augustus to Tiberius and Rome and, the, and Nero and the political rule that had uh, made the, the Curios the lord of the time, the king, the Caesar, the one who said what was good, what was bad, what was right. And the Christian had many questions. This gospel is helping to answer them through this light who could even enlighten a man who is receiving this word now, this gospel. So he was in the world. It's going to be repeating this world. We've got it one time. I'm going to put a little tally list here. One time now. He was in the world. This is the second mention of it. And the world was made through him. Yet the world knew him not. So we get here that the idea of world is not just the order and systems that govern humanity, but it's but this order and system that that does govern humanity is wrapped up in the humans that run it and the resources that they use to make it happen, both of which are products of creation. So, as the creator, he created the humans, he created the resources, the humans and the resources then, independent of God, established order and systems to govern humanity, to bring some sense of right into the world, and this true light, which is going to enlighten every man, enters into it, and even though he created the world, and it was made through him, the world, it says, does not know him. It knew him not. So the world then, the order and the systems, the humans and the resources, by not knowing him, or I should, I should have pointed that arrow up there, by not knowing him, because they didn't, it doesn't mean that they didn't know who he was or what he was about. By saying that the world did not know him is that it did not acknowledge his authority. It did not acknowledge his authority. Specifically, the text tells us that he created everything. So they did not acknowledge his authority as the creator of humans and their resources. And if he is the creator of humans and their resources, then he has the rightful say as to how they are to govern and bring order and establish systems in the world to say what is right and what is wrong. But they did not know him. They rejected that authority that he had to say what was beneficial. As we see in creation in Genesis 1 and the linking of this to Genesis 1, just by the in the beginning thing that I told you in the first session, we know that when God created the world, he created it, it was good. There was an order to it that at the end, seven times in Genesis, he could say it was good. And that world having been established the way that he did with human beings and, and the man having dominion and, and the animals listening to him and intending to the garden, that all of these things are what God, as creator, who has the authority to govern, to be sovereign, and, and really this, this uh, is going to move in understandings of the Christ or the king. Uh, but God himself is the one who has the rightful authority to say what's good in the world, as he established it. But when he came and joined his creation, and I made some emphasis on that, but when the true light comes to join his creation in the world, because the humans and the resources are his creation, when he joins them, they don't acknowledge his authority. They don't acknowledge the fact that he's the creator. They reject the order that he's going to bring to their order, and the governing to humanity that he desires to bring that it ends up being in opposition to their government. We'll pick up next time on verse 11.